Shug Knight recently said he used to be a superstar and now he's just a no limit soldier. What do you say to that? And he used to be a CEO, now he's just a inmate. That tells you a lot of I'm disappointed in that because if you want for me, you'll still be in prison. Someone 28 years in prison for running over two men and killing one in a Compton parking lot back in 2015. In the latest installment of his podcast, Collect Call, featuring an intriguing conversation with Suge Knight, the former music mogul candidly exposed his own reality, seemingly breaking free from the shadows to reclaim the spotlight. This riveting discussion from Suge Knight's prison confines sent shockwaves through the audience. For those unfamiliar, Suge Knight held a notorious and formidable presence in the celebrity scene of the 1990s, evoking fear with his very name. Untouchable and commanding respect, he was a force to be reckoned with. So, what are the revelations all about? And how did Snoop Dogg react to all this? Let's find out in today's video. But of course, before we go any further, make sure first that you subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell for more updates and videos like this. One of the reasons that nigga come. Like Snoop. Oh, well, Snoop would never come. I mean, Snoop was on, you know, we beat a murder trial for him, but then he was on probation. Then he got caught with two ounces of marijuana. Turn around and you said you partners up with this dude. Neither one of y'all got death row or bought death row or purchased death row. Now it's, it's but Snoop Doggy Dog. A judge in Los Angeles refused today to drop murder charges against him. Notably, Suge Knight harbored a long-standing resentment towards Snoop Dogg, a fellow celebrity, and witnessing Snoop's external success fueled envy within him. Suge Knight, instrumental in aiding Snoop during a pivotal 1990s trial that spared the latter from a substantial prison sentence, felt overlooked and unappreciated. During this eye-opening podcast episode, the imprisoned producer made a startling revelation about Snoop Dogg, unearthing information that could potentially land Snoop in a situation mirroring Suge's own incarceration. The revelations made in this candid discussion add a layer of complexity to the relationship between these two iconic figures from the 1990s hip-hop scene. Suge Knight, a prominent figure in the music industry, for an extended period co-founded Death Row Records, contributing to the release of iconic tracks. However, his ascent wasn't propelled by musical prowess. Rather, he was known for a confrontational and sometimes aggressive approach to achieve his objectives. This demeanor garnered him both enemies and legal troubles, culminating in a 28-year prison sentence. Someone 28 years in prison for running over two men and killing one in a Compton parking lot back in 2015. Life behind bars for Suge Knight is rife with drama and tension. Snoop Dogg, a fellow figure from the hip-hop scene, holds a grim outlook on Suge's future in prison. Suge Knight's extensive legal history, dating back to the 1990s, includes convictions ranging from traffic violations to assault, substance possession, and domestic maltreatment. Despite adopting the moniker Suge Bear, in his youth, shedding the bear component, his life took a dark turn, particularly in early 2015. In a bizarre incident related to the filming of the NWA biopic, Straight Outta Compton, Suge Knight appeared on set on January 29, 2015. The reasons behind his presence remain unclear, with speculation suggesting concerns about his betrayal in the film and potential financial compensation for the use of his likeness. This incident, among others, further deepened Suge Knight's legal troubles, contributing to the complex narrative of his tumultuous life. Presently, Suge Knight holds a cache of compromising information concerning his long-standing rival Snoop Dogg. Positioned as a potential revealer of how the rapper managed to evade legal consequences in a case dating back three decades, Suge is poised to disclose the undisclosed intricacies of Snoop's 1996 legal entanglement. While the details of Snoop's alleged crime may be widely known, Knight emerges as a bearer of additional intriguing facts. Dispelling any lingering doubts about the rapper's innocence, Suge asserts the pivotal role of bribery and manipulation of authorities in securing Snoop Dogg's acquittal. Through this revelation, he aims to shine a light on the clandestine maneuvers that ensured Snoop's departure from the courtroom as a free man. We the jury in a bubble title action find a defendant, Calvin Brodus, not guilty of the crime of murder in the first degree. Meanwhile, Suge contended that law enforcement had overlooked a pivotal clue in Snoop's criminal case. 
According to him, Snoop should have faced a hefty 20-year prison sentence, and Suge spent a staggering $6 million throughout the trial to ensure Snoop didn't receive a life sentence. Witnesses were brought in to testify against Snoop, and Suge asserted that the rapper had committed fraud alongside Michael Harris, a claim to be explored shortly. Suge urged viewers to subscribe to the channel and enabled post notifications for upcoming celebrity videos similar to these. Additionally, he retracted his previous statements about personally saving Snoop Dogg from a potential life sentence, now asserting that Snoop would still be behind bars if not for his intervention. Adding fuel to the fire, Suge disclosed spending an astonishing $6 million to address various issues related to Snoop's cases, including thwarting a blackmail attempt within Snoop's inner circle and consulting with a private investigator to clarify matters. So what you mean when you say, um, what you mean when you say that you, uh, he'd still be in prison? Because when, when Snoop got convicted for the murder. Knight asserts that his intervention led to the disappearance of a supposedly incriminating tape, shedding light on this incident three decades later, even at the risk of jeopardizing his relationship with his former artist. The catalyst for Knight's decision to bring up this matter stems from the rapper's recent acquisition of Suge's label in 2022. Knight implies that the rapper may have acquired the label through questionable dealings, providing a potential motive for his revelations. In an audio release from April 2023, Knight unveils the truth about Snoop's ownership of the label, linking it to an alleged criminal act involving Snoop and Michael Harris, the label's early financer and convicted kingpin. This revelation adds a layer of complexity to the ongoing narrative surrounding the business dealings and legal entanglements within the music industry, particularly concerning two influential figures like Suge Knight and Snoop Dogg. Suge Knight underscores that the sale and acquisition of Death Row Records may face legal challenges, particularly given Michael Harris's prior bankruptcy filing. Suge expresses confidence in eventually reclaiming ownership of many of Death Row's hit releases. Snoop Dogg's announcement of this acquisition of Death Row Records in February 2022, though with undisclosed deal details, was met with his enthusiasm, marking a significant moment in his career due to his earlier involvement with the label. Suge contends that the legal complexity surrounding Death Row's ownership are causing a notable stir in the rap world. In a prison interview, a leader of the Bloods gang disclosed Suge Knight's efforts to maintain a low profile while incarcerated. Despite his tough image, Suge is portrayed as avoiding a brash demeanor in the yard with fellow inmates. This revelation emphasizes that some individuals may adopt a tough facade while, in reality, seeking to blend in with their incarcerated peers. Suge's isolation in prison appears to run deeper, as revealed by a lawyer named Alex Alonzo, who noted that the animosity Suge has amassed over the years still lingers among his prison community. The trial, and those guys had to come testify against him. It was a hundred po it was a hundred pyrus and bloods out there. It's truly remarkable to ponder the potential trajectory of Suge Knight's career, as the mastermind behind the empire he rightfully constructed, his own ego proved to be the downfall that led to nearly 30 years of incarceration. The blame for his predicament falls squarely on his shoulders. The irony is palpable when considering his envy towards Snoop Dogg, someone he had significantly assisted in his career only to see his entire label taken away. Knight harbored genuine skepticism about Snoop's true role as the label shot caller and accused Michael Harris of deceiving the public by asserting that Snoop had a partner. According to Knight, this partnership amounted to bankruptcy fraud. Snoop Dogg, when questioned about Suge's role in Death Row Records, displayed a noticeable reaction, indicating a sensitivity to the topic at hand. These convoluted dynamics between these influential figures in the music industry further add a layer of intrigue to the unfolding saga of Death Row Records. But to play ball, he got some bread, he destroyed the tape. In the familiar narrative, Snoop Dogg faced a first-degree crime charge after an incident where his bodyguard, McKinley Lee, shot a member of a rival gang named Philip. However, Knight introduces an alternate version, challenging the established facts. Leveraging his influential connections, Suge orchestrated efforts to suppress the truth in the aftermath of the incident. 
This revelation also unveils the LAPD's mishandling of the case, with critical evidence such as Phillips' clothing, bullets, and shell casings inadvertently destroyed. Despite the case's complexity, the jury, after six days of deliberation, rendered a verdict of not guilty on all charges against Snoop and his bodyguard, providing a sense of relief for the defendants. This alternative perspective adds layers to the narrative, highlighting the intricate interplay between legal proceedings, influential figures, and the justice system's potential shortcomings. Contrary to the perception that the resolution of the incident marked the conclusion of the story, Suge Knight's recent claims reveal that he found himself entangled in tying up loose ends even after the apparent settling of the dust. The quest for justice took an unexpected turn when the victim's family initiated a $25 million wrongful lawsuit against Snoop. In a clandestine twist of events, the lawsuit was settled out of court in August 1996 for an undisclosed amount. Meanwhile, even today, there are people who hold a grudge against him. Though it looks like Suge Knight is doing everything he can to keep a low profile and stay out of trouble during his time in the clink, he sure has a lot to say about people outside. Could his words ignite trouble on Snoop Dogg and others outside the cell? Well, we can only wait to find out. That's all for today. We hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more videos like this.